So the next step is going to take our hide, which has been completely flushed. And that's actually about how you want it to look. There's all the scraps. And one of the things that I do is I have these extra buckets. And in the bottom, this is actually clean salt. And I've got some wings from a goose in there, the deer tail, uh, some other stuff, whatever you want to do, and that's going to be a clean one. Underneath, I've got my dirty salt bucket. And what is the dirty salt bucket? The dirty salt is the salt that I'm going to put on here, and when I scrape it off, it goes down on the floor. I'm going to take that salt, and I'm going to use any scraps of flesh in there. One of the things that I really like about it is you can put salted flesh and run it on your trap line. I don't know what everyone else does with theirs, but it's just something I found works so that if you're trying to get predators, you're trying to get out there, um, this works. The other thing is the used salt. Bring it back up, dispose of it on your property, um, and you've got uh, a, a nice way to add minerals back into the environment. It's not baiting. Um, and the other thing that I like to do with it is you can actually mix it with your dirt and take that dirt, and then that's going to help prevent your dirt from freezing in the wintertime. So again, I use it uh, for a lot of different uses, but when I mix it in with my dirt, that dirt can go right over your traps, and that's going to help you out. So I'm going to salt this, and I like to use these boards down here. And I'm just going to lay it out, and then you're going to salt it. You're going to salt everything on the inside. Once that's there, you're going to fold the skin on skin and roll it up into a ball, and you're going to want to angle it so that any of the goos and stuff come out of there. And once you do that, you're going to let it set for 24 hours, and you're going to come back and do it again. Salt it a second day, and then uh, we're going to put it into a pickle. Uh, I've decided, Lady Shrub Cat decides she wants uh, hair on for this. So she wants to keep it. So to do that, you're going to create a warm pickle with salt. Again, go on the tractor supply company. They're going to have that salt in bulk, six bucks, seven bucks for a 50 pound bag. That bag is going to last you probably, you know, five, 10 animals, depending on size. Um, so for a cheap investment, it's well worth it. I'm going to salt this. Once that's done, I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you, I got a goose back in the early goose season. And he's a Canadian goose because when we shot him, he went honk, hey, honk, hey, no, just kidding. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do that, and I'm going to tan him as well, uh, or her. going to tan that, show you how to do that. So uh, let's get started. Now, if you're going to send your skins out um, to somebody else, you're going to want to keep them green, uh, freeze them, and you can have them flesh yourself. Once you put salt on, you only salt hides if you're doing a specific uh, tanning process. And that tanning process is, make sure I'm here, but the tanning process that I use with the Jahide tanning formula from Trapper's Hide. Uh, requires that you salt it and that's going to draw the moisture out. You'd never want to do that if a taxidermist tells you don't salt the hide. Uh, they usually use their own process and what's going on. So this this formula tells you you salt the hide. I put a little bit down to begin with. And that's just going to help soak up any of the goo. There's no such thing as over salting a hide. Uh, I actually put more on than you probably need to but the, the it's going to just going to work into that hide better. So let's get started. getting it everywhere.
biggest thing I find too is if it's warm out and there's flies around, you're going to have flies. Salt's going to help preserve. Get this ready for tanning. It's going to help prevent flies from uh, getting maggots and larvae. You're not going to be able to prevent that. So working every day, following the directions, doing exactly what you're supposed to do, is going to make it so that you don't get uh, any of that growth going on. True buckskin tanning is actually not a tan at all. It is a uh, uh, process in which you have soaked the meat, kind of dried it out, and its membrane is gone, but uh, it is actually not a tan if you look up the true historical sense. Again, every little spot. These legs I'm just going to start rolling up. See all those little folds? Got to get all those spots. You're basically making like a first stromboli if you're Italian. Just gonna roll it up. The concept is you're sucking the moisture out. I guess it could always be like a giant burrito too. I don't know if you can see all that. That's all saturated salt already with moisture coming out of that hide. The last thing you want to do is I run some right over the top, the ends. This kind of seals it in just like if you were doing an egg wash, trying to get it nice and brown on your uh, stromboli. Same thing. I got one deer stromboli. Hope that uh, helps.